Of all the tales of lives of P, one that has always interested me the most is Carlo's life before death. Before his ergo was trapped inside Geppetto's puppet, what was it that made this resentful young boy the hero he would become? But before we travel to the past, it's time to give credit where it's due. Thank you to Play on Worlds for sponsoring this video. Orbit Studio has recently launched Ebenezer in the Invisible World on all platforms as of November 3rd. Ebenezer in the Invisible World is a single-player metroidvania based on Charles Dickens' novel, A Christmas Carol. You play as Ebenezer Scrooge, who has the ability to see ghosts. Many of these apparitions still linger in the land of the living, and it's up to Ebenezer to aid them with their pending matters. In return for his assistance, the ghosts grant Ebenezer incredible powers and abilities that allow him to traverse new areas and face off with increasingly disturbing foes. Not everyone in London is fortunate enough to celebrate the holidays, however. Many have taken to the streets to protest against Casper Malthus' poor working conditions. Ebenezer will once again journey through the past, present, and future of not himself, but the one responsible for the current state of things. What will he discover when his adventure comes to an end? Well, only time will tell, as they say. Ebenezer in the Invisible World is available now on all platforms. If you're looking for the perfect game to get in the Christmas spirit, then be sure to use the links in the description down below. I'd also like to give kudos to Amit Kilo for locating the Easter egg in the previous thumbnail. As the city entered a creative renaissance due to the discovery of Ergo and its wide variety of uses, the greatest minds of Krat were hard at work shaping the future. Engineers, inventors, and even alchemists work hand in hand developing technologies that would propel Krat decades ahead of the world, ushering in a new age in the process. But change was an unforgiving force, one that disregarded concepts such as love and family. Giuseppe Geppetto was a proponent of forward progress, and sadly his son Carlo would suffer the consequences. At a young age, Carlo was enrolled in the Monad Charity House, an orphanage turned prestigious boarding school, courtesy of generous donations and sponsorship from the Monad family. It specialized in three different paths that students would follow depending on their aptitude. Graduates would leave the school with the title of Stalker, Workshop Technician, or Alchemist depending on the schooling they received. As the years passed at the Rose Estate, as it was often called, Carlo's relationship with his father gradually deteriorated. Memories swirling in the sands of the Alchemist's Isle revealed how his desire to see his father slowly transformed into resentment for the man that had abandoned him in the pursuit of change. His initial fears and anxieties would be replaced with an utter disdain for Geppetto and his priorities. Even when Carlo graduated, his feelings towards his father hadn't changed in the slightest, as evidenced by the collectible called Someone's Necklace. The item description provides further insight. It reads, A necklace once worn by the King of Puppets. It is engraved with a boy's scribblings. To Romeo, your friend C. The boy resented his father for not showing any interest in him. Perhaps in protest, he gave his graduation necklace to Romeo, a friend he admired. Despite the fact that a void had grown between them, Geppetto was still quite fond of his only son. In order to commemorate Carlo's enrollment to the Monad Charity House, he commissioned an artist by the name of Dorian Gray to capture the moment. Geppetto also knew that his son was quite fond of a certain fairy tale featuring a mischievous wooden puppet, a story that was widely known throughout the city of Krat. Being the young rebellious sort, Carlo had chosen the path of the stalker. These renowned warriors had splintered into two distinct factions, the Bastards and the Sweepers. It was no surprise to discover that Carlo was likely associated with the Bastards for more reasons than one. The obvious one being the fact that he didn't regard Geppetto as his father, and the second being the manner in which he perished. Keep this in mind for later. Carlo spent most of his time at the Monad Charity House alongside his best friend Romeo, who also went by the nickname Lampwick. Together they vowed to be the best stalkers Krat had ever seen, and sought an apprenticeship under the legendary stalker herself. Although little is known about her, she forged her own path and remained unaffiliated with neither the Bastards nor the Sweepers. Memory sequences on the beaches of the Alchemist's Isle reveal that Gemini was her fellow stalker and likely served as her right hand, often shooing away the prying fans to keep them at bay. At some point, Carlo and the legendary stalker were acquainted as suggested by not only her regret upon learning of his death, but also his unmatched combat prowess. Carlo had learned from the best, and even Romeo stated in his encrypted message that he was still an unstoppable fellow. Although it is not explicitly stated in-game, loading screens reveal that Carlo died as a result of the petrification disease. 
Additional loading screens further share that the first instances of the plague occurred amongst the alchemists. Polandina teaches us that the bastard faction of the Stalkers was known for their alliance with both the alchemists and the workshop. This would naturally result in a proximity to the alchemists, which eventually led to Carlo's exposure to the petrification disease and subsequently, his untimely demise. When Geppetto learned of his son's death, he was stricken with grief. His regret for prioritizing his work before his only child forced him to recall better days. The days when he saw a young Carlo reading a fairy tale about a mischievous wooden puppet. Amidst the shattered pieces of Geppetto's heart, an idea was formed. The work he had dedicated his life to was not in vain. Carlo would live again. After much sacrifice and unspeakable acts against the unknowing people of Krat, a child was reborn. But what would the boy do with the second chance at life? Would he become a hero or a harbinger of death? And that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me know you want more content just like this. Click on these videos on screen to continue your journey through Krat and I'll be there to guide you when you arrive. Consider becoming a member for exclusive perks like emojis, members only videos, and more. Or check out my Ko-fi or Patreon page if you just want to support me in a more personal way. Until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out. Join the Inhuman community today.